All right, next up we have Jim, Jim Mumford. Jim loves plants <laughs> and the outdoors, and he made this his business to bring more nature into the urban landscape and indoors. His company is called Good Earth Plants Company, and it provides landscaping, plantscaping, <laughs> service and design, living walls, and green roofs. Beautiful. Beautiful. God, thank you. Thank you everybody for being here today. Take you on a 40 year journey for uh, seven minutes. Um, we figured out we like to grow plants in weird places. You know, anybody can grow them in the ground, but you could do it on a wall or a roof or inside. Uh, we're even doing some ceilings now. So, any plane that you can think of, we can grow a plant on. I want to take you back a little bit on this journey to my childhood. I spent a lot of time outside and I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, nature by fishing and hunting and hanging out with my dad and my grandfather, learning plants and getting constantly quizzed on them. And then I found out there's a whole field of study called biophilia, which is the love of nature and our connection to it. Why do we feel restored when we go out next to a stream or the ocean or the mountains or whatnot? Biophilic design brings nature and incorporates it into our designs. So, uh, 1978, I started out business at a little flower shop downtown, and this is where I started to learn that I could incorporate that love of nature with my appreciation for art and make money. And so, being a florist and then being a plant person, because we started doing potted plants inside. And uh, we're throughout San Diego doing commercial work, primarily some residential. Uh, Thomas Jefferson School of Law, their atrium downtown, a lot of different kind of work. Here I'm humming along back in the late 90s. This is good. I got married, had a couple of kids, built a big house, went to bed on my birthday, woke up the next day and fire hit. What do you do? I reinvent myself. So I'm kind of bored with indoor plants. I've been doing it a long time. And I remembered I went with the uh, architects convention here in town. And I saw in that bottom left a green roof modular tray. And I thought it was about the stupidest thing I'd ever seen. But I was intrigued enough by it to say, let's see what a green roof is all about. And it fascinated me. And so with no possibility for, there's no really options in San Diego. The green roofs are northern United States, southern Canada, Europe. So I decided to do my own building. That's my kids helping me get planted there. So we started getting some jobs, uh, primarily residential. Laguna Beach, Del Mar seems to be a hot spot for me. These are two Del Mar projects we did, small roofs. When you look at a green roof, there's a whole lot of advantages that it brings to you. From an environmental perspective, it'll process stormwater, it'll help cool the building down, it adds biodiversity because it attracts birds and bees and butterflies, and that's unused space up there. There's a huge movement to do rooftop farms. Not easy, very hard to make that return on investment work. Um, through the press we got, through the roof we did at the office, which is the first permanent green roof in San Diego, Mario Batali and his group, the Batali group, said, hey, we want you to come up to Hollywood and put a rooftop farm on our pizzeria mozza. Old roof, waterproofing I didn't trust, didn't trust the building, said let's do a vertical farm. And they loved it. Because of that, more press. And I got on CNN and Fox Business and Food and Wine magazine. And that just exploded business and took off. We did another one for them upper left. I can tell you squash does not grow on a wall very well. <laughs> Pumpkins don't do well. Corn really does poorly. Strawberries, tomatoes, all kinds of herbs do really well. Uh, another little Dharma, Dharma project upper right. Bottom right, uh, Seasons 52 up in Century City. Really good example. There are pots in angled trays so that when they cut them, they can replace the plants. So otherwise, if you've got an edible wall in your restaurant and you cut it, it looks like, what's a good term, crap for a couple of months. <laughs> it just doesn't look good. You can't get it to grow out fast enough. Um, one of my favorites is about seven years old now. It's up at the Energy Innovation Center in Claremont. It's changed and evolved quite a bit over time. It's a very random pattern. The random patterns are interesting to take care of. Things grow down and things grow up. Thomas Jefferson School of Law, 85 foot wide green wall, very architectural pattern. Now keeping that pattern is difficult, adds cost to the client. 
um, very early sustainability project up in Venice Beach. Uh, the wall failed, we got to redo it for them. There's a green roof on top, you can't see. Solar water, solar power, really neat project up there. Uh, a grass wall. Grass is really hard to grow on a wall. It looks great. Tell your client, I gotta mow it. <laughs> What's it look like after you mow it? Not great. Um, I also got hit by Santa Ana. Imagine Santa Ana blows over your lawn, and kind of burns the pot, you blow it right into that thing and it, and it burns it. Uh, Planned Parenthood down the left, uh, upper, upper left there, we're trying to go over the top of a pond and next to a uh, pool, so access is always an issue on taking care of these. Uh, probably one of the most recent ones, Hotel Dow, block really ugly view. Uh, we're doing all these walls, we got a couple big roof jobs. This is Sharp Memorial Hospital. Study after study shows that a view of nature has patients recover more quickly, they use less pain medicine, and they complain less, which makes it good for the hospital staff as well. This is a Glenn Schmidt design. Those are bars of music and musical notes. Ode to joy. Um, here's our crane, I had to get FAA clearance to get up on top of that roof. You can't quite see, but that's a red E in that right corner. That's the emergency room. So imagine working around a hospital, all that had to do. Um, the most challenging project to date. Fallen Star, if you've seen this up at UCSD, part of the Stewart Art Collection. I had, it's on the seventh floor. Doho Su, the artist, crashed this little house into the corner in juxtaposition of student life with their home life. Uh, very eclectic East Coast kind of front yard. It's changed a lot. You can get up there on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 11 to 1, I think. I had six bosses, the architect, the artist, the landscape artist, the general contractor, Stuart Art Collection, and UCSD, and everybody wanted to treat in some different place. <laughs> uh, perch, we've taken Perch across the country, so down in Atlanta and Dallas, et cetera. Um, a company that I can't name that rhymes with Bugle starts with a G. <laughs> uh, airport on the right here, one of our favorites, bottom left there. Um, uh, she has us change it out every year to Christmas, so uh, we love her. A lot of people don't want to put enough light, or they don't want to have to deal with water, they don't want to deal with maintenance, so we started working with moss. And this is all preserved moss. It only goes inside, we can cut it in shapes, we can add other things. You see we're starting to add uh, wood to it and faux plants. This one on the right and bottom left, there's a live plants mixed in with it. It's up at Gensler up in Los Angeles. Uh, just went in a couple months and I really want to see how this grows out. So building integrated vegetation is what I call it. So I need a better term. Please help me. It's a mouthful. But it really speaks to what we do. If we're not careful, our cities look like this. They could look like that. And after all this fun I've been having all these years, now we start to give back. And so we've got a program called Plants with Purpose for a nonprofit. Uh, this is the Alpha Project. We brought a whole lot of plants down to them. Uh, they're obviously dealing with a big homeless situation now. I'm not sure my plants are going to help much, but maybe they feel a little better. Quick plug, uh, not this Saturday, following Saturday, we have an open house. You can come up and see the living walls. We've got a display. You can touch them, poke them. I mean, it's different than looking at a picture. We're blowing plants out super cheap.